Hi guys, Dave with the First Place Auto Parts. Thanks for joining me in the shop today. You know, suspension is something that's oftentimes overlooked. It's out of sight, out of mind, but there are few components on your vehicle that can affect so many different things. Suspension can affect the way your car handles, the way it rides, and it also affects the way it looks. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the top three things you can do to your vehicle under the car that has to do with suspension to enhance all three of those things. So stay tuned and we'll take a look at those items right now. Hey guys, if you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're gonna continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on. We take a look at the latest parts that are available and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff. I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna see. The first item that most people think of when it comes to a vehicle suspension are the springs. And springs come as either coil springs or leaf springs. And really the spring's sole purpose in life is to support the vehicle's weight. Now where this comes into play is in regards to the various options are, stock ride height is good, right? It's meant to carry a vehicle at capacity. So if you have a four-door car, typically the spring rates are such that they are wound to be able to support that vehicle fully loaded with all its occupants and possibly some luggage in the trunk. If you have a truck, there's a reason why it has a 10,000 pound load capacity is because it has some super stiff springs in the back. Look, that's great if you're gonna haul with your truck all the time or you're gonna carry a full load of people, but what you typically tend to get is a ride height uh, that's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller than what you might like. Look, a lowered car looks sexy, man. It really does. And not only does it look cool, but it lowers the center of gravity of the vehicle. That's where these springs come in. You can either get lowering springs or springs that lift your vehicle up in the air, such as a four-wheel drive application. But either way, springs are the first place where you're going to want to start with actually adjusting how your vehicle rides, but also how it sits. And when you talk about springs, you have to talk about the spring rate. All springs are wound to a certain spring rate, and essentially that spring rate is the amount of weight that it takes to make that spring start to compress, right? When you shorten a spring, you have to go up on your spring rate to still maintain control of that body and that suspension as it goes through its motion. That's why when people, the old trick to lower a car was to either use a torch and heat it up till it was cherry red and the spring would actually sag, or people would start to cut lengths out of the upper part of the coil to lower it as well. What they don't take into account is they've done nothing. Well, with a torch, you have done something, but by cutting the spring, you've done nothing to advance or increase the spring rate. As a matter of fact, with a torch, what you've done is actually reduce the spring rate because you fatigued the spring where you've heated it up. That's a whole other subject, but that's why when you do those kind of backyard modifications, Typically, the car rides very harsh. It bottoms out a lot. Like, it might be great to give you an idea of what the stance would look like, but I would never recommend doing those things on a vehicle that I either wanted to drive every day or that I wanted to drive really anywhere. That would be a temporary fix. But spring rate is something that you need to understand. When you shorten your springs, you will go up on your spring rate. That is gonna make the ride a little stiffer. And it's also gonna make the spring rebound a little quicker, which is gonna lead us to our number two item. And the second most popular upgrade, and one that's critical when you change springs, are your shock absorbers. As you shorten or lengthen those springs, the shaft travel of the shock absorber itself has to be adjusted. That's the number one critical thing, but if you remember what I said about spring rates, as you increase spring rates, the shock wants to extend. When you, you've got compression, and you've got rebound, right? So as your spring compresses, the shock is filled with oil and or gas, and it slows that compression down. Otherwise, you would just have this spring that would bounce. So the shock is what allows the front or the, the wheels themselves to follow the irregularities in the road, keeps the wheel planted as it's coming down through the suspension. Then as it rebounds, as the car comes back up, as the spring releases its tension, the shock also uh, controls the rebound dampening. So what it's doing is it's trying, is that thing's trying to extend. It's creating pressure inside that shock and there's valving that actually slows that process down so it doesn't rebound too fast. If you've ever ridden a car with blown shocks before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
it's very quick to go through its travel and it goes up very up very fast as well in its travel and sometimes you'll actually hear the shock what they call topping out which is where um, essentially you've exceeded or met the uh, the maximum extension of that thing and the uh, the shaft and the, the valving inside have met with the canister that holds all that so shocks are critical look shocks have different tuning rates in them as well if you've lowered a vehicle typically you have a very short travel shock it's got to do a lot of work in a short amount of time so valving and quality shocks and if they're oil filled or gas and oil filled are critical too but shocks absolutely have to do everything with ride but also how that wheel follows the ground so when you do your springs make sure you get shocks that complement your kit and finally the number three item the most popular item that you can do to your car suspension is either increase the size of your anti-roll bars or add anti-roll bars to your vehicle anti-roll bars are essentially torsional springs they are the same principle behind a coil spring in that they have a tremendous amount of stored energy and they're meant to flex. When you have a control arm, what that does is it mounts to, especially with your front suspension, because a lot of times, or almost all times, it's independent, you'll have your suspension move, your control arms and your wheels move independently of each other. That sway bar will connect both of those things. The sway bar is mounted to the frame and it saddles. And it'll connect to each one of those control arms and as each one of those wheels go up and down independently that arm is twisting helping to add a little bit of spring rate but also control the motion of that suspension where that really comes into play is when you take a turn and your body or the car body leans they used to call these things anti-sway bars and that's what they do as that body leans it starts to put pressure on the arms the, the, the links that go to your sway bars that connect the, uh, the lower control arms to the sway bar itself those arms will start to flex in different, different uh, manners. That bar is taking that flex and it's slowing it down. It's making it harder for that body to flex. That's why when you see a pro touring car or even some of your NASCARs, for example, the sway bars that these things run are massive. Now what a sway bar does do is it does add a little bit to the spring rates, right? So again, when we're talking about components and the components that have to work together, this is kind of a, uh, it's, it's something where it all has to match. Spring rate, the shock absorber's ability to control to rebound and compress, the anti-roll bars that control the body lean of the car, they all come into play and they all have a purpose in the handling and ride of your vehicle. The topic of the suspension of your vehicle, it seems simple, but it's actually a very complex mix of various parts. The top three items are your springs, your shocks and your sway bars that can modify how your car rides, how it handles and how it looks. Choose your kits carefully. Don't always go for the cheapest kit and make sure you understand what you're getting when you buy your kits. Guys, I hope you found this information useful. And until next time, keep the hammer down and keep it between the guardrails.